Well, my furnace is still out. It's been like three weeks. I'm still cold. <laughs>don't worry it's still cold but I also have my space heater in here which is doing a really great job um, today I wanted to talk through some of my best books of 2020 my most disappointing books of 2020 and the those pretty good books of 2020 uh, if you don't know I read a hundred books in a year for the first time ever and I'm really excited about it so I wanted to share some of my reading experience throughout the year so I think it's only fair that we start with the middle of the road books so we're gonna start with my those were pretty good and the first one I wanted to talk I wanted to talk about is convenience store woman this book was really great it really spoke to me I had a lot of fun reading it. I didn't really know where it was going to go, so it was a nice little guessing game for me, and I really, really enjoyed this one. Next up is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Really adored this book. I loved the way it was told. Uh, the writing was really good. It was really accessible. Uh, as a lot of you know, I, I'm not the fastest reader in the world, but I blew right through this one, and I just couldn't put it down. I, I loved it. I gave it to my mom to read, and she really enjoyed it, so this one was really great. Next is The Beantown Girls. This one just stuck with me. I, I wouldn't call it, you know, it, it's a historical fiction and it's about the Red Cross girls, you know, the donut and coffee girls um, traveled around Europe in World, yeah, in World War I. And I, I loved this book. It was, it was sweet. Uh, it was introspective. And, um, you know, those women went through a lot too. And these, these stories that are coming out, um, of the women's perspective during these time periods has been really, really interesting. A couple other ones, you know, like Code Girls, um, which I believe Code Girls was World War II, but you know, still these wartime, these wartime women, uh, their stories are being told and I love it. The next one that uh, was really good is Stephen King's The Langoliers. This was the first book I read this year and it has remained one of the better ones that I read and I it's so inventive I, I don't think I've ever seen the movie um, I know the movie's pretty cheesy uh, the graphics aren't great I believe it's up for a remake but I don't remember um, but the Langoliers the book is so creative and inventive and that just struck me and I was like this, this it's so unique and I can't recommend it enough. This was definitely one of the, this was up there for me. I've really enjoyed this book. Another one is a young adult novel, which I don't typically like, but I'm, oh, I got to give it up to Akata Witch. I enjoyed this book so much and the characters are really great. The, the history is really rich and I cannot wait to read Akata Warrior. So now I'm mixed should I go to the worst ones now or the best ones do we want to end on a on a shady note or do we want to end on a high note what do you think pup do we end on a low note or a high note she says high note she always takes the high road she's a classy bitch <laughs> so um we are going to move to the bottom books the most disappointing I have a hard time DNFing books. I only DNFed three this year, but oh, we won't talk about those because they don't matter because I DNFed them. But uh, my most disappointing books, we're going to start with Junkyard Cats. It was an Audible original. I got it for free with my monthly subscription. Couldn't even tell you what it was about. Hated this book. I, I just didn't. I just kept speeding up the time on the audiobook. I was like, oh my gosh, I just got to get through this. C couldn't stand it. Didn't, I don't know, it was just dumb. <sighs> Next was When Dimple Met Rishi. Really, really disliked this book. I was going into it, like, just looking for something lighthearted and sweet, which is what it's said it is, but it's also about, you know, traditions over a, a traditional lifestyle over non-traditional lifestyles um in india there's arranged marriages or to have a love marriage or a love match 
Dimple doesn't want any of that. She wants she wants to go into the tech world and industry and she doesn't want to be set up with someone, but her parents are like, no, we got someone for you. So then they, so I thought we were going to go into this having like a cultural experience, but it was just a dumb teen. Not that teens are dumb. I mean, the story, it's just, it's low hanging fruit. It's the lowest common denominator of stories. It's the type, to me, it's the type of story that gives us that false perception of dumb teenagers. I couldn't stand it, did not like it, do not recommend. The next one, ugh, it's it's The Paper Magician. I had really high hopes for this one, but I hate, oh, it was so boring, and it just... There's not much else I can say. I was bored to tears. And I just couldn't wait for it to be over. Do not recommend. And good reason Audible keep recommending the the next one to me. The next, because it's a trilogy, I believe. And I was like, no, skip, stop recommending me this. Because I hated the first one. I'm not going to like the next ones. Another one I hated is The Third Wife. This book drove me insane. None of the characters are redeemable. They're all assholes and they're just entitled entitled jerks that don't have the status to back up their entitled attitudes. It just, I hate, oh, did not like. And then the last one. I had a really rough time with the first two volumes of The Boys. The show is fantastic I adore the show the show is great the graphic novels on the other hand like I'm no delicate flower I'm not delicate I am not a like oh you know they said a curse word or they're talking about sex like no that's fine a lot of that doesn't bother me just the horrid attitudes toward homosexuality and just the sexism and the racism and stuff like that. And I get this is supposed to be a seedy underground type of tale. But it it was gross. I did not like. Um, I, I'm still debating reading another volume or two. Just to see if they change. Or maybe get better or something. I'm, I'm still open-minded enough to, to try and keep going. But... Because the underlying story is so interesting. What would we do if we really had superheroes? Would they be part of the military? Would they not? Like, like the, the, the underlying... The undertones and, and, and the actual core of the story is interesting. It's all the fluff stuff around it that is just horrible for horrible's sake. It doesn't do anything for the... St- I feel it doesn't do anything for the story. For this guy to be homophobic just doesn't do anything for your core story. I just don't get it. But it did not like, do not recommend. So now we're going to move to the good stuff. I'm going to start with a book that's pretty popular. So it's not like a surprise that it's going to end up on my on my top five. Um, I really enjoyed Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I just, I relate to Spencer so hard. <laughs> like she was, I was very much that girl as a teenager, probably still am t- uh, to this day, is just far too independent for my own good. <laughs> you know, tough, stubborn, competitive, all of those things right here. The next book, uh, just my heart just sings and I, I've recommended it to some friends and I, I have had friends come back to me and be like, that was wonderful. And I've heard different reviews about it and I, and I, I get it. I understand, but I, I, my heart just sings for this book. And that is, uh, the kingdom of back by Marie Lou just such a 
such a beautiful story and uh, it made me want to learn more about um about Mozart and that family and and the sister and non role and I just I love a book that makes you want to keep learning because there are books you close and you're just like man okay that's done but this one just made me want to keep going and find more books like this as well as find out more about the reality the real people and the real situations and scenarios that inspired this book and it just I loved it so much the next one is I'm thinking of ending things this was one of the books I read the last quarter of the year wow wow crazy I this book was so good so much going on in it and immediately after I finished it I went and watched the movie and the movie's fantastic too it kind of messes with your mind and it's it's so good it doesn't hold your hand like a lot of stories do when it's like come along no it makes you think and it makes you puzzle out what's really happening and figure it out for yourself which I love and the next book that is just mm, so good it's called The Girls this is Emma Klein's debut novel and it mirrors um, it mirrors the Manson Charles Manson group and it's so Oh, it's so good. The, the the angsty teenager turning, you know, um, getting involved with the wrong people and then sort of getting out of it at just the right time and then realizing how close she came to this type of danger doing these acts. It's just, it's so good. And, you know, childhood in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, you know, now it's there. It's so they're so different from one another. And just to be like, man, as a teenager, I would never been able to do that. But, you know, even as, as a teenager in the 90s, you know, early 2000s, it's like, no, we I mean, we still were out and about, you know, come in when the lights come in when the street lights are on type and you know, sort of 60s into the 70s, it wasn't even, it wasn't, it wasn't even that. It was like, oh, where are they? Have you heard from the kids in the last couple of days? And that's kind of what, what that was like. And I just, it was really good. Uh, cults fascinate me. So this was bound to be in my top anyway. So just very, very interesting look into sort of the process of indoctrination. Interesting stuff. And the last, my top book of the year that I keep recommending to people and that I just loved so much. And I don't, I don't know if I can really express why, but the writing was, the writing was very good and the information was great and the story was was it was just all there and it is a historical it's historical fiction slash nonfiction. I mean that I don't know how much of it is actually don't know how much of it is like sort of woven together with fiction facts to get to the next nonfiction point but that was Tidewater by Libby Hawker adored this book this was one of my favorites of the year it was one of the early ones that I read and it's just nothing really has been able to top it and I mean, I love history. I love reading about historical figures. And this this one just hit all the right notes for me. Uh, the audiobook was fantastic. And it's, it's a good one. So there you have it. My top middle and bottom books of 2020. First book that I've read in 2021 was My Dark Vanessa. And we'll talk about that one later during my wrap up for January in a couple weeks. But until then, well, not until then, until the next video, don't forget to like hit all the buttons and subscribe and follow in all the places. And I'll see you next time. Bye.